This city has big plans, and when we say big, we mean big. Skyscrapers, the Olympic Games, massive new mega projects pushing the bounds of engineering. And it's all happening down under. The next decade will see a transformation on an international scale, and it's all beginning right now with the biggest infrastructure project in the state's history. A new metro that burrows under the city itself. But this isn't Sydney or Melbourne, this is Brisbane, Australia's fastest growing city. Now, if you haven't heard of Brisbane before, then you're not alone, but the city has lofty ambitions. That much was clear when it won the bid for the 2032 Olympic Games. That the Games of the 35th Olympia are awarded to Brisbane, Australia. <laughs> Brisbane is Australia's third largest city, but it's growing at a phenomenal rate. Around a thousand people move into the region every week. While the Olympics are a part of Brisbane's rebranding as an international destination, it won the bid precisely because of the city's commitment to its ambitions and the massive new infrastructure already being planned. That includes the $6.3 billion megaproject Cross River Rail. It's a 10.2km rail line with 5.9km of twin tunnels that dive under the Brisbane River and Central Business District. Essentially, they're building a massive new railway right below downtown Brisbane. The project includes four new underground stations and eight upgraded stations, plus the development of three new Gold Coast stations. Beyond that, what you've got is uh, a network that is, hasn't been upgraded for quite some time. And so we've got uh, stations in the inner suburbs, which some of them date back to when they were first built were in the late 1800s. That's Graham. He knows a lot about this project. So I'm the um, CEO of the Cross River Rail Delivery Authority. It's really the biggest infrastructure project in the city's history, in the centre. And what it'll do is change the way in which people actually move around the city. Cross River Rail seeks to rectify a major problem with Brisbane itself. You see, the city is defined by its river, for better or worse. And this river is a beast. The Brisbane River is quite a large river. It's tidal uh, and several hundred metres wide and it's quite deep. Um, so it cre creates a bit of a barrier and it sort of separates the city um, from you know, north to south. But it's a meandering river as well too. Right now, there's only one crossing over the river, severing the city into two distinct halves. In 1979, there was a bridge built across the river uh, but that's really the only crossing and that constrains the, the way in which the rail network can, can operate. Um, it constrains it to 24 trains per hour. Cross River Rail provides a second crossing of that river but actually goes under the river. The new railway will ease pressure on the current rail network, which is nearing capacity. And this transformation that we're doing basically unblocks that bottleneck that's in the middle of the city which is, is really tied to that historical development. So we're, we're really sort of unshackling the core of the city. Untying this knot will unlock enormous economic potential as well as revitalising previously disconnected precincts. The construction of the rail itself already provides the city with 1,500 jobs a year. There's a business case too. One report predicts the project's benefits will outweigh the costs by 1.9 billion Australian dollars. And for every dollar invested, the project will return $1.41 in benefits for Queenslanders. The development, you know, in some economic forecasting, multipliers take it to sort of 15 to $20 billion worth of growth, and in the order of 35,000 jobs around, just basically as a result of the uh, interconnectedness that you're going to get out of having the, the rail system and then the development around those. Perhaps the most important reason for the construction of Cross River Rail is the population explosion the region is expected to have. The population of South East Queensland is forecast to grow from 3.5 million today to 4.9 million in 2036. In just a few years, that puts the region on par with Melbourne and Sydney. More than 80% of this growth is going to happen just outside Brisbane, while at the same time, 45% of job growth is going to occur in the Brisbane metropolitan area. This means that jobs are continuing to sprout up in the city while people are moving to the suburbs surrounding it. And there's a vital need for better public transportation to connect the two. 
the stations really are adjacent to the CBD. Uh, so that means you traveling public have to walk about 10, 15 minutes really to get to the center of the CBD from the railway stations. Not to mention, these new stations will link up with the Olympic Stadium, transporting the millions of expected tourists in 2032. But building under a major metropolitan area is no easy feat, and the engineering challenges themselves have been immense. When you see it up close and personal, it is an engineering marvel. It's almost like doing you know, open heart surgery in the middle of, of the CBD, digging an excavation down, and, you know, down about 50 metres below the CBD. That was to get below all of the services, get below the footings of the current um, high-rise office buildings and so forth. So it's actually the deepest hole ever dug in Brisbane. And uh, we're putting the station into that because the, the tunnels have to weave their way underneath the middle of the city. So the tunnel boring machines do what they had to do to get under the river. Uh, the rock is very hard. They just ate it up. The Albert Street station sits 31 metres below the heart of the city, and in such a densely packed area, every bit of space counts. That's where these mezzanines come in. They make use of these massive tunnels by creating a pedestrian level directly above the train tracks. Now, mezzanines aren't anything new, but the way these ones are being built is new with this segmental bridge technique. That's a pretty common practice for building bridges above ground, but constructing something like this in a tunnel underground is a whole new challenge. Here's how they're doing it. Each mezzanine beam is precast in massive concrete segments weighing up to 70 tonnes. They're then lowered down through this hole in the heart of the city into tunnels that will become the new train station. Because an underground station is a lot more cramped than a wide open space above ground, equipment was custom made to fit the site. Next, those three segments are connected into one single beam, which is picked up, rotated 90 degrees, and then placed onto the cavern arches to form the mezzanine level. This was all made possible thanks to the early integration of a digital twin of the entire project. It's essentially a virtual version of the Cross River Rail using software from Bentley. It was even first-person navigable, just like a video game. The model is so detailed that those on site can use it in real time, essentially as an x-ray to see behind walls or what's behind them. It's also meant that other future projects in the city could access the model and plan around the new stations down to the millimetre. The digital twin has enabled engineering and construction decisions to be taken quickly and efficiently, reducing overall costs. Design flaws could be spotted and fixed before they even became a problem, while the progress of the entire project could be seen from every angle as it happened. The model will be used to train future drivers, as well as to update members of the public and brief ministers and the Premier. Specialist needs and disability groups are also using the model to ensure accessibility. Once the project's constructed, the digital twin will be used by operation and maintenance service providers. When we started out on doing our 3D modelling, which we see as one of the sort of things that we're very proud of, there was no single solution that was actually going to give us what we want. Bentley project-wise provided the common data environment, which is the platform that we're using now. And really, they've been able to help us adapt. And as we've evolved the project and the model, Bentley have been part of that journey with us. Cross River Rail is now well on its way to being delivered. Early works began back in August 2017 and major contractors commenced construction in late 2019. The project sets open in 2026, well ahead of the 2032 Olympic deadline. Using the Olympics as a means of, of a catalyst for that type of activity uh, you know, is, is a really positive thing. We need to be Olympics ready. The next decade is going to see phenomenal changes for Brisbane and South East Queensland. And when you look at projects like this, you realise those changes have already begun. <laughs>